Let's begin with a prayer, shall we? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise to you, Lord God, King of the universe, and all glory to your name. We praise you and thank you for calling us to proclaim your word to your beloved people. Open the hearts of all who worship with us so that they may hear your voice when we read. Let nothing in our life or manner disturb your people or close their hearts to the action of your spirit. Cleanse our hearts and minds and open our lips so that we may proclaim your glory. All praise to you, Heavenly Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, uh, that's the opening prayer that we are meant to pray together. And uh, today, this afternoon, we'll just look at a few um, things on uh, the lecture ministry. We have a basic introduction and then the liturgy of the word, which is our main focus. And then um, some conclusion and a Q&A session if you have um, any questions. Uh, I hope the writing is big enough to see. Okay. Um, so according to what we call canon law or liturgy, uh, the lector is a minister who proclaims the word of God at mass and at other paraliturgical services. Paraliturgical means outside the mass, okay? Uh, other non-liturgical services. And you will notice the use of the word proclaim instead of read. Uh, so reading and proclaiming uh, two different actions, okay? And um, so the lector reads the other readings. We shall look at that in a minute, uh, except the gospel reading, which is reserved for the deacon or the priest. Sometimes it can be read by a bishop, but then the bishop is also a priest, okay? And then there are two forms of the lector ministry. Uh, there's one that we call the lay ministry, which is uh, the ministry that's been given to most of you. And then there's the instituted ministry, which is given for uh, young men training for the priesthood. So at my stage of religious formation, I am a lector in the church, I'm a reader. You start off as a reader, and become an acolyte, a server, uh, then you become a deacon, and then a priest, a bishop, and a pope, oh, okay. So we have a, um, an official ceremony or liturgy for giving this ministry either to a lay person or to an instituted minister. There's no liturgy for resigning from this. We, we don't have that. Uh, it's like baptism. You're baptized, you're baptized, okay? And then um, I forgot to bring a copy of the canon law, church law, okay? Basically, it says um, lay people have a right to participate in the liturgy, and uh, they also have the right to be trained or prepared for any ministry that uh, they are about to receive. Okay, so it's your right to read at Mass, okay? For some ministries, uh, the church has to uh, give a salary um, for that service, like uh, the sacristan. Sometimes some churches have a paid organist or a paid catechist. Uh, for the lector ministry and the acolyte serving, it's not a paid ministry, just so you know, okay? And uh, before the, before two years ago, uh, like from January in 2021, this ministry was technically reserved for men in the church. So Pope Francis changed it and opened uh, the doors for 
the, the change, it was just a matter of changing the canon, changing the law. Uh, lay people have been reading it at mass for a long time, so that's why I've underlined the word uh, technically, okay? All right, um, so the readings are proclaimed, they are not read, and uh, it's good to bear in mind that the lector is, uh, is God's mouthpiece, so you are a representative of God uh, during mass, reading his word, um, for the people of God, nourishing them with uh, God's word. So it's kind of meaningful that the lector comes out of their seat uh, from the congregation. It's like um, the incarnation, uh, Jesus becoming flesh, becoming the word of God. So you get up from your seat, from the assembly, and you go up to the altar and, uh, and read, okay? Uh, and the, it is important that the lector um, is presentable uh, in whatever way they read or in their gestures or actions or whatever, because this act is um, sac sacred, okay? It's important to do spiritual preparation uh, to pray, okay? And not just, um, if you don't, then it becomes simple reading and not uh, proclamation. And then you have to strive to live a holy life, okay? Uh, you can't say, um, uh, I've just got up to come and read, uh, don't focus on my life, don't put a spotlight on my, on my life. I am a sinner just like the rest of you. And then in your own life outside, uh, you do whatever, um, that's not appropriate for me. People will talk, you know, and you'll only create problems for yourself. So I also underlined to strive because uh, we are sinners. We only try to live a holy life, okay? So the elector ministry goes um, beyond the church. It, it accompanies you throughout your, your life, okay? So as most of you know, uh, we have different parts of the Mass, okay? There's the Liturgy of the Word, the Liturgy of the Eucharist, and so on. So we're only focusing on the Liturgy of the Word, okay? Word meaning Word of God. So it begins after the priest has uh, said the collect, the prayer that uh, concludes the opening rites uh, of the Mass, okay? So... Um, by the time you expect it to be seated somewhere near the ambo or the lectern, okay, so you get up from your seat and um, you walk down um, in the middle and then you bow or genuflect. To genuflect is to do this, okay? And to bow is this. Uh, it's better to do a reverent bow, okay? Not just this or, or this, but somewhere this. And somewhere near the altar, not in the center, okay? And then uh, you go up to, to, to read. And the readings are always done, for, are read from the ambo or from the letter, okay? And uh, there's a special formula for beginning the readings. So it's a reading from the book of, a reading from the letter of St. Paul, from the prophet Jeremiah, okay? So don't invent your own formula, okay? We are very traditional and conservative. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, tradition is beautiful, okay? And then um, when you have finished your reading, um, the way to end is to say the word of the Lord, and then you come down the altar, you bow or genuflect, and then you go back to your seat, and the next reader comes up. It's good if uh, both of you uh, can bow or genuflect at the same time as one is going back to their seat and the other one coming up to read, okay? And then you don't read the gospel reading, okay? And the readings are not supposed to be substituted with anything else. I think in South Africa there was a s s somebody who landed themselves in big trouble because during a wedding, 
instead of the readings of the mass, they substituted them with a poem, very beautiful poem. And the poor sister was hauled into a tribunal court, a church court, and what what. So don't substitute the readings, especially during the mass, okay? Yeah. Um, okay, the, it's important you know that the readings actually come from, the, from sacred scripture, okay? What we call the Holy Bible, okay? Then from the Bible, they are organized um, into this book called the Lectionary, okay? This is the book of readings, okay? So inside the Lectionary, they are organized according to a three-year cycle. So there are readings for year A, year B, and then year C, okay? So throughout the three-year cycle, uh, we read the whole Bible, okay? That's, that's the whole point of uh, organizing the readings into a three-year cycle. So currently we are in year B, okay? Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, sometimes it happens that when people come across um, something in brackets inside the text, the reading of the Mass, they just skip that. So the safest, the safest thing to do is just to read everything that is in the reading, okay? Whether if there's anything in brackets, read it. Just read everything, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, the, read, the readings, there's a short form and a long form of the readings. So you have to ask the priest if you have to read the long form or the short form. Uh, by default, you have to read the long form, unless the priest says uh, they prefer the short form for uh, pastoral reasons, okay? So this is what I've been talking about, that the readings are organized into a three-year cycle. So it's from the Bible, sacred scripture, and then organized into a three-year cycle in the lectionary, and this is a small booklet called the Ordo, okay? It contains the order, the readings of the day, okay? For instance, uh, it differs from country to country, okay? Because for instance, today in this part of the world, we are celebrating uh, Chinese martyrs and all the saints of China. It's not the same in the Philippines or in America. Sometimes it differs from diocese to, to diocese, okay? So uh, the normal thing is to go to the order, uh, but the sacristan will have prepared the readings for you, okay? So it gives a date, I'll circulate it around. So today is the 9th of uh, July. Okay, let's see what it says for today. Okay, it says, Oh, this is for the Philippines, okay? Because we don't have an English version for uh, Taiwan. It's all in Chinese. Okay, it says uh, July 9th, oh, cycle A, sorry, year one. Uh, 14th Sunday in ordinary time. It gives the liturgical color as green. And then mass, it tells you what mass to celebrate and then the readings, okay? There's the first reading, usually taken from the Old Testament, and then the responsorial psalm, and then the second reading, usually taken from the New Testament or Revelations, and then the gospel readings, okay? The gospel reading. Um, if there's anything, any additional information to be written down below here. So, in the church down below, in the small room on the side, there's an order there. So you can go in there and check if uh, the readings you have prepared are correct, okay? So that's how you know if uh, the reading you're going to read is the right one or not, okay? And then uh, the Lacta ministry go also goes with the reading during special prayer services, 
maybe there's a, I don't know, Marian prayers and the, the word of God has to be read. So it's the same uh, formula, okay? A reading from the book of Jeremiah, you read, 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 and then the, the, at the end, the word of the Lord. Sometimes outside the mass, maybe during a prayer services, uh, the gospel has to be read. You can read it, okay? Yeah. You don't need the deacon. The, it's specifically for the deacon and the priest during mass, okay? During the Eucharist, okay? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, you read and then you finish with the same formula, okay? Uh, any questions so far? About the, about the readings, okay? All right, that's the, the order. Um, okay, so the, it's important, just so you know, that the Old Testament has, um, we have 46 books uh, all together, okay, uh, for the um, version of the, the translation of version of the Catholic Bible. There are some books um, that uh, Protestant churches don't acknowledge. Uh, there's a history behind it with uh, Martin Luther. There are certain parts of the, they're called apocrypha, certain parts of the Bible that he didn't like about praying for the dead and all that. So if whatever you, on his own authority, took it out what he didn't like, okay? So most Protestant churches have 66 books altogether of the Holy Bible, okay? And then the readings are always read. Eh? Even if you come across a quotation inside the first reading or the second reading from the Psalms, it has to be read. Nothing is sung eh? in the first reading. Okay? And then it is usually connected to the, to the gospel. Okay? Uh, the first reading is connected to the gospel. And then in between a moment of... Uh, Silence is preferred so that people can uh, reflect on the word of God that they have heard. Then immediately after that follows the responsorial psalm. It's taken from one of the 150 psalms, okay? Uh, in some cases it comes from the Old Testament or New Testament, special feast, feast days, things like that, okay? Uh, it follows the first reading, so it is a response to the word of God that uh, we have heard in the first uh, reading, okay? Um, it is usually sung, okay, but most of the time it can be recited, especially during the weekday mass, okay? Um, so the Psalms by nature, just so you know, they are kind of existential, they are connected to life, to human emotions, uh, to human suffering, to joy, okay? Some of the Psalms say, oh God, prepare my arms for battle. Uh, today we have a new understanding for that. It doesn't mean to go and, uh, to go out and fight uh, non-Catholics or something like that, but it's the spiritual battle inside uh, oneself. Sometimes it expresses great, great joy, okay? Um, yeah, so. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's the second reading. Okay. The second reading is actually uh, not connected to the first reading or the gospel. It uh, stands alone in its own. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, it is out of place there. Uh, it just has a, a theme on its own. Usually have it on Sunday, two readings on solemnities or special uh, feast days, okay? Usually taken from the letters of uh, St. Paul, okay? And then comes the short thing after the uh, second reading, we call that the gospel acclamation, okay? So it is to greet the uh, gospel, okay, uh, that is about to follow. And that part is also usually sung or chanted, okay? Uh, during the weekday mass, we, we just read it, okay? 
In some cases, it is led by the cantor or the choir. Uh, that's very normal. Okay, and we stand during the gospel acclamation. Uh, in in Zambia, I noticed that the people sit during the gospel reading. They have a cultural reason for that. There's, we have also something we call enculturation in the church, which means uh, as far as it is normal and not too strange and not too out of place, the, um, the readings or, the, or liturgy, what we call public worship, also reflects the, the culture of the land, okay? Okay, and then during the gospel acclamation, the deacon uh, or the priest will also process out uh, with the book of gospels. Okay, that's another aspect. But the gospel can also be read from the lectionary. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, outside Lent, we don't sing the Alleluia. Okay, there's another special acclamation for that. Okay. Uh, okay, the lecture ministry also goes with reading the prayers of the faithful, okay? They are also called general intercessions, okay? Um, some churches have a, a book where the intercessions are already put together. Uh, there's a section for ordinary time, one for solemnities, for feast days, for Christmas, for land, and, and all that, okay? Uh, yeah, this is the Chinese version, um, yeah. So the lector can also read the prayers of the faithful, okay? Sometimes the prayers are just composed uh, by somebody in the parish, okay? And then it looks very uh, bad, actually, if you go up with just a piece of paper to read the uh, prayers of the faithful or even the readings of the mass, okay? So sometimes we just put it inside a file like this and then if you have to carry it up, um, you just come up and uh, and read, okay? That, that gives reverence to the word of God, okay? Uh, we usually have something called a participant's copy, which helps people to follow the mass, but that's not where the readings should be read from, okay? That's just a participant's copy, okay? We have different colors here and uh, all sorts of things. Um, if you put it inside a file, it will just work as fine, okay? And that would be okay too. And the prayers of the faithful have a general structure uh, to them, uh, but there's no rule uh, or law that uh, says we should do it like this. Um, we usually, uh, sorry, there's an order here. We usually pray for the needs of the church on the last point, then we pray for the government and the salvation of the world and those burdened by any kind of difficulty, the local community, vocations for the dead and any special in, uh, intercessions or intentions uh, that people may have, okay? But I've been to small um, Christian communities, we also call them outstations. During the prayers of the faithful, there's no, they're not written down um, beforehand. Uh, people just say it spontaneously from where they are seated. Okay, that's also okay. That's also fine. Mm, they're usually technical words here, so it helps to prepare beforehand. Okay. Uh, then they have rules that are actually not strictly followed. Okay. One of them being that you actually have to put on a, well, what is it, an alb or some kind of vestment to go up to read, okay? The lector has to wear that. Uh, I have to, I have to, as an instituted lector. Uh, but we, we don't follow that. We don't, we don't do that, okay? 
And then um, if there's an instituted lector like me, and then uh, a lay person who has received the ministry of the lector, actually I have to be given priority to read. But we, we don't do that, we don't do that. Even if it's a papal mass, uh, the Pope would like to see lay people participating in the mass, okay. But if you go to some dioceses that are um, ultra conservative, uh, the seminarian has to read. So that's just part of how things work. We are not democratic, we are hierarchical, but very nice, in a nice way, okay. So you just have to accept that, okay. Uh, but most of the time it, um, it doesn't happen, okay. And for the intercessions, the priest usually gives a short introduction and then there's a response in between. And then for the there's a concluding prayer at the end and then you go down. Okay, that's the minister of the elect. Um, there are some, do you have any questions thus far? About the ministry of the elect. Um, I'll also distribute this. In some big uh, churches, like very, very big basilicas, they have a, a small group of readers. Some, in some cathedrals, they have a mass every hour. Uh, so they have readers, and then it helps to know how to write out a reading rota or, or timetable. I, I found this one in one church in in Battersea, London. Very simple, yeah. because sometimes uh, we don't know how to do simple things. So a, a simple uh, sketch of how to write out a reader's timetable, okay? You just put what the church is there and what day they are reading and their names there, okay? Just like that. In case you find yourself in charge of um, the lecturers group in a very, very big church, okay? All right. Um, maybe I'd like you to invite you to sit next to somebody who has this uh, handout, okay? Okay, um, some basic practical things. Um, one of them being that you have to um, arrive early on time for the reading. You don't want to get everybody worried and show up at the last minute and yeah. And if you can't make it, then you need to find somebody to take your place uh, to substitute you, okay? Uh, there are no specific rules of how you have to dress um, as long as it is decent, okay? That, that's good enough, okay? Presentable, maybe, is the better word, okay? Yeah, as long as it is presentable. And then what follows is just the, what I've mentioned, uh, when the reading starts, when it ends, uh, the first reading and the second reading. Uh, then here there's something called, I found this in my computer. I don't quite remember where it came from, okay? Maybe we just take turns to, to read, okay? Uh, they call it the Lactus Ten Commandments. Okay. <laughs> any volunteers without any specific order? You just read aloud from Commandment One wherever you are. Anybody? It's like in the form of a pledge, like what you're going to do. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah? Just read aloud from where you are. Hmm. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Well, remember that it's about God and His Word, never about me. Yeah, so it's, it's not about your diction or your accent or your ability to, re to read without referring uh, from the book, but it's about proclaiming the Word of God. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, okay. Sometimes you come across uh, difficult biblical names. Uh, Caiaphas, Nebuchadnezzar, 
even more difficult names, okay. Jero, Jero Hashabat, uh, something like that. <laughs> Very difficult names, okay. Number three. Although the readings have been prayed and practiced their weeks before the Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe practicing weeks before the Mass is a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> Okay, if you can practice the day before, that will just be fine, okay. Um, yeah, don't um, read it for the first time on the spot, okay. Uh, next, number four. I will honor my family in heaven in my posture and my prayer Yeah, uh, so it's important to maintain a prayerful posture uh, when reading, okay. Uh, number five. I proclaim the living word with an urgent passion that is alive and happy. Yeah, I think it's in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter four, where it says the word of God is alive and active. It's like a sword, a double-edged sword or something. So when you read, so the word of God should be alive, okay, and. Uh, not dead, okay. Uh, next, number six. I will dress in a way that brings honor to my father's house and family. Yeah, so that is pretty clear. Uh, dress appropriately, okay. Number seven, next, anyone? I will not seek affirmations or compliments, realizing how glory belong to God. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, generally speaking, people will praise you if you, if you, if you if read well, okay. But at the end of the day, the glory and honor um, is for God, okay. All right. The next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes. Um, the emotions and uh, life's uh, setbacks and things get in the way. So if you are feeling a little bit under the weather or unhappy or uh, it's very, I mean, it's part of life, uh, then you might as well ask somebody else to read, okay? Mm. We don't want you to stop in the middle of the reading and cry or whatever. Or <laughs> we don't want that to happen, okay? Mm. Okay, next. I will support, uplift, and pray for others who also seek and proclaim God's word. Mm, okay, as much as we pray for vocations, it's important to pray for lectors, okay? Mm. The last one. We honor the opportunity to proclaim the word and recognize the privilege. Yeah, uh, in some churches, these things are uh, taken seriously, okay? Um, there's a, there's a church in London that's very, very conservative. They're called Brompton Oratory. They're the kind of, they are a church and a school. They're the kind of a school where you still have to get a letter from the parish priest, um, which says uh, the young boy has um, had his confession. That, that's part of the application to study at their school. And their readers practice on a Saturday, so it's, they take, things very, very seriously. Um, so it is a privilege, okay? It is a privilege that comes with the responsibility of um, preparing um, for the readings, okay? Uh, I think I've mentioned uh, most of these things. Um, I'll just see if there's anything missing. Mm. Does it yeah. Ready, ready. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll do that. Sometimes during mass you have to read with or without a microphone. So during the weekday mass here, there's no microphone. So the acoustics, the sound of the sound design is very good in this church, okay? So it's a small chapel, you don't need a microphone. So if you stand here and uh, project your voice, um, that would be fine, okay? Uh, in the church down below, there's a microphone. So as you get up 
Okay, if you, when you get to the ambo, you have to make sure first that the microphone is on, okay? Uh, well, you have to arrive early to check that it's connected in the first place, okay? There's no use tapping on the mic to see if there's any sound coming on if it's not connected, okay? First, the mic has to be connected, and then the, the lectionary has to be in place, okay? It has to be where it has to be, okay? And then, well, you have to find your own way of testing if the microphone is working, okay? Uh, some people tap into the mic, some people blow, okay? I don't know. The best thing is to uh, test it before, before mass, okay? Some microphones have um, an LED light, okay, which shows you that the microphone is on. Uh, in any case, you have to be familiar with the mic, how to turn it on and, and off, okay? Sometimes in the middle of the reading, um, you have to pause and breathe, okay? So don't, don't breathe into the mic, okay? <laughs> because it will just broadcast your sound like that, okay? Um, it depends on how tall you are and uh, uh, you have to stand comfortably and at least be like maybe two inches away from the microphone, I mean. When you test it before mass, you will know how close you have to get to it in order uh, to be heard clearly across the room, okay? And then the acoustics, the sound works differently when the, the church is empty and uh, when there's a congregation, okay? And then it has to be set at the right volume, okay? All right. Any more questions about the microphone? The mic. They can adjust it accordingly, right? Yeah, but you have to know how to do it, okay? Uh, when, how to bring it close. For example, the two meters, one is tall, one is short. short. So mm. when the first meter comes down and the second meter is tall, then you have to adjust it. Adjust it, yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the time, you just have to draw it closer to yourself and um, you don't need to adjust the height, okay, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's just a free mic in, in some churches, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in a very, very solemn masses, um, an altar server will come down to get you, to escort you up to the, to the amber or to the lectern, okay. In, in some churches it's done, in others it's not, okay, it's normal. Okay, just follow them, okay? They will take you to where you're supposed to read. Okay, and a few practical things, okay? So you come in maybe 10 minutes um, early, and then you check the order, or you confirm with the sacristan or the priest that is the correct reading, and so it has been pre-marked, okay? Set in the right place, and the aircon and the fan is not going to flip pages and things like that. So that's okay, the reading has been pre-marked, so you sit in your place near the arm, or preferably in the front, okay? Uh, sometimes it happens, you know, just before the mass starts, somebody gets up and then they start flipping pages and you don't know what they are doing, okay? If the mass hasn't started, you have the right to go up and tell them, please, the lectionary has been pre-marked, okay? This is the reading for today. This is the gospel, so please don't, don't, don't turn any pages, okay? Um, sometimes, uh, I've seen it, uh, you have a confused altar server. I've seen it twice. Uh, just before the reading, um, maybe, I don't know, for whatever reason, once I saw it, the altar server came and took the lectionary away and then put it in the sacristy. <laughs> and then the poor lector didn't know what to do, okay? <laughs> okay, in that case, um, you have to call one of the altar servers to, that's their job, you know, to serve at the altar, to put the book back or the MC or the deacon or uh, the ushers or whatever, okay? Somebody has to get the book and, and bring it back, okay? Mm -hmm. 
And then once I accompanied a priest to celebrate mass in a mass center, they call it a mass center, it's not a, a parish church. So when we get there, we find that the other priest has taken the lectionary with himself uh, to celebrate mass somewhere else. It's a small church, they only have one lectionary. So what do you do in that case? The, 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 you, you can't have Holy Mass without the readings, you know. Well, what do you do? You can get the readings from the Bible, okay, from the Holy Bible. Just that you need to spend a little bit of time to, to mark it, you know, and, and know where the first reading is, the second, the third. So if you have the Bible, it's fine. It becomes a little bit complicated with the responsorial psalm, okay. Yeah, but you, you can use uh, Holy Scripture, okay. And then you have to be careful with the special masses where the readings have been typed out, okay? Maybe because they are special readings. Uh, because maybe it's a new feast for the diocese or the country. So they have to type it out and put it in a file in something like this. Mm. You, you, you must make sure that the reading doesn't have any spelling mistakes, okay? because you'll be reading the Word of God, okay, or whoever is um, responsible for preparing that reading. There shouldn't be any uh, mistakes, there, any typos or something like that in the reading. Um, now, if you want to prepare for the readings at home, uh, you can buy yourself this book. It's called the Daily Roman Missal. Uh, some lectionaries have the readings of the weekday, okay? I think this one. Um, so it's written, it's written here, lectionary for the weekday, for, the, for weekday masses, okay? For others, it's only Sunday. So you don't want to be looking for Sunday readings on a weekday lectionary, okay? You won't find them, okay? Mm. Uh, so this... This book, the Roman Missal, you can get it from St. Paul's bookshop. I don't know how much it costs, it shouldn't be that expensive. So it has all the readings for year A, B, C, and then the weekday, feasts, and uh, Sunday readings. They are all, all here, okay? Yeah. So you can practice at home and, uh, yeah, and prepare for that. Okay. Just have to share. And sh that's fine too. Mm. Yeah. Uh, for the lectionary, in case you find it, it will be uh, corrupted by somebody, which means the back page is not there. Where, what we advise people is that first of all, remember what you are reading. Today you are reading wisdom. Okay, wisdom chapter 3, 1 to 9. At least you have that idea. So mm. even if it is gone, you will be able to locate. Second thing, remember there is a small number in square next to that. Try to remember that number also so mm. that you can easily flip to that. This is just a tip oh. because it happens sometimes even to for us that for some reason the page was gone. Oh. So you have to know your at least what part you are reading and try if you cannot remember, remember that little number that mm. you can see it. That, yeah. So Judy is talking about this one. Yeah. That is how, sorry, my, my way of remembering in case, in case, but I do have to remember that today I'm reading wisdom. So even if I flip, uh, I recognize that this is correct, this is important. And also maybe remember at least the first and the last line, because sometimes it can be the same reading, but uh, what happened last time, it was truncated, which means that what is in the Sangua, the usually is different from what is in the lectionary. So uh, remember the first and the last. Even in the middle, people won't recognize. And then the second thing about the mice, that, uh, uh, can I, I would like to call Angela. She was demonstrating just now. You have to throw a paper, right? Suppose this is the mic. Mm. As I say that for all readers, mic is your friend. Mm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if it is your friend, you don't have hands on your, your friend's head, right? So you don't do it. This is, uh. this is a don't. Mm. Don't do this, mm. okay? It's the same thing, you don't blow to your friend's head. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so what we usually do, that mm. will be the, 
you use, you produce a small sound that you can hear. Can you hear just now? Mm. Something like this. So people won't, it won't disturb. And in big mass don't do testing. One, two, three, four, ten. That is also strange. If there, if it is, if there is nobody there, of course testing. One, two, three, four is okay. Otherwise, we make a small sound with your your tongue or your something, so that at least you can hear. Okay. Remember, this is your friend. You don't do this to your friend. You don't do this to your friend. Okay. She was demonstrating just now. The best acoustic is like this. Mm. It's not like this. Imagine my head. If I'm speaking like this, and if I'm speaking like this, the same. So normally, it is. It should be something like 45 degrees. Watch the Oscar presentation. Do you see the mic down here? <laughs> normally, it's landing like this. Normally, okay. Mm. But you did see people holding mic like this, and it works. Why? Because there is a technician at the back tuning it. Mm. Next time, use the mic, use the one that we hold. You try to talk to it when it is like this and this, the acoustic come out different. Mm. You have to hear it, then you realize the difference. Okay? And even when you see the mic, it's also like this. You don't see our mic position like this the same, right? So it's also to yourself. But how it comes in, you have to test it yourself. Whether it's for me, sometimes it's so close that it is too loud. I have to put it far away. As I say, even now, I don't need the mic. But for some of you, as I say, everybody is different. You need, this is your friend. Try to familiarize yourself with it. It is a very difficult answer. Okay? And as before you start reading, take all the time you have to adjust it. Because as Jennifer said just now, you will have somebody who is much taller than you. Okay, you get it ready, but then the first reader put it up like this, you have to adjust it. And then, of course, during March you cannot, you cannot test it, but at least you can, you listen to your own reading and you can still adjust it. Okay, mm. that is just a little sharing. Yeah. So she did it just now very well, I see you holding it like this. Watch all the singers, do mm. they hold the mic like this? No. <laughs> no, I watch all the famous singers. They normally do it like this, right? So this, because that is the best way to go in for the sun to go in. Hmm. It is never like this. As I say, don't take your mic as the ice cream. <laughs> that is not. Don't do it as if you're holding an ice cream. It is always like this. Is just a little sharing. Maybe you have to try and test it one day yourself. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Uh, okay. Um, so what do you do if uh, you've just started the reading and uh, somebody comes up to tell you that it's the wrong reading? Uh, sometimes it happens, you know. Usually only the priest and the deacon or the one in charge of the liturgy or the commentator uh, will tell you that the reading is, is wrong, okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes um, the one who's prepared, prepared the reading um, maybe uh, hasn't checked um, with, the pre with their father if it's the right reading or not, or, or something happens. Yes, sometimes that happens. If you have to read again, so you, you start all over again, okay? Uh, yeah. Don't let an altar server tell you it's the wrong reading, okay? <laughs> it's usually the priest or the deacon or anybody officially in charge of the liturgy, okay? Yeah, all right. Yeah, mm. okay. But most importantly, if it comes early, mm. or like at least 10 minutes before, because we have a, a, a small uh, rule that uh, if you're assigned as a reader and then you're not here 10 minutes before, we will have to find uh, stop uh, another to do the reading for you because we wouldn't want people to like rush in, rush in and then uh, checking the reading so if you're not here 10 minutes before then you will have to find another reader who is available okay okay lastly is a reader it will help you to familiarize yourself with the bible okay just to know how the books of the holy bible are arranged Okay, mm. yeah, and the Gospels and, and all that, okay. Uh, I also recommend you to listen to the, uh, the reading from the USCCB. 
because that can also give you a feel about the tempo, how to read it. So in case you find it, uh, sometimes there's nobody to practice. You can listen to it. Uh, that is how we check our readings also. We can share it later. We will put it again. Actually, it's in the lecture group in the notes. Oh. And I put down the two websites to the USCCB that you can listen to it to help you prepare oh. the reading. Okay. And then next time we don't have a written test or exam. We will just have some practical practice. We'll do it all together, okay? So I'll put up a question here, and then we think about it and uh, yeah, and answer the question together. Okay, thank you. So we are just going to end with a short prayer. Uh, please stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you.